Hey guys, it's Carrie, and I am back with another travel talk video. And today I want to talk about cruising just in general, and then kind of talk about how I decided to settle on the one that I decided to take. Now, I didn't bring any notes with me, so that's probably not a great idea because I'll just end up rambling a lot more, but let's go ahead and see what I can let you guys know about and just get into this video. So this particular cruise that I am planning on taking, I believe it will be my eighth cruise if I have added up everything correctly in my mind. So I have done most of the cruises have been in the Caribbean that I've done. I've also done a Hawaiian cruise. A Canadian cruise uh, that went up the well, New England cruise, I should say, went up the new uh, the coast of New England in the United States and then into Canada, and I have done a Mediterranean cruise that left from Barcelona. It went to Florence, Rome, Naples, and uh, Majorca, Palma de Majorca, and then back to Barcelona. So in the uh, Caribbean. I have been to, let's see, Jamaica, Grand Cayman, Mexico a few times, um, uh, bah Nassau, Bahamas, St. Thomas, um, Antigua, Tortola, um, Puerto Rico, St. Martin, I may be leaving Belize, I may be leaving something out, but that's where I've been. Um, we've st we've, it also stopped in Key West. And so most of the Caribbean ones, um, well, let me put it this way, all of the ones I've taken from the Caribbean have left from Florida. I've either left from Fort Lauderdale or Miami. And, uh, well, I, I just, that's not true. One left from New Orleans. The very first one I took left from New Orleans. So they do leave from other places other than Florida. So that is an option. They have one, I believe that goes out of Galveston, Texas, one that leaves from Mobile, Alabama, one that leaves from New Orleans. And then a few that leave, there's like maybe one from South Carolina, one, um, I think from New York, you, I think the one from South Carolina and New York may go down to like Bermuda and, but the majority of all Caribbean cruises typically leave from Florida. Um, there are other spots um, where there just may be one ship that is just um, ported into that port and it's the only ship that leaves from there. So when you decide that you're going to take a cruise, you, let's just say you just made your decision, you've never taken a cruise before and you decided, I want to take a cruise. So there's some things that you need to um, think about first. <laughs> Number one, what is the destination where you are interested in going? Get that idea in mind. And then maybe think, how many days do you want to be gone? I have taken... Um, most of them have been seven days. I think one has been six days. I want to say maybe five or six days. One was 15 days, but everybody else has been um, seven days. I really would not, me personally, <clears throat> excuse me, I would not want to do an, a one under seven days again. That's just uh, one of my favorite is the seven days. This one that I am planning for 2018 is going to be a 13 day one. And I am super excited about that one. The 15 day cruise went, uh, it left from, uh, excuse me, the 15 day, I'm getting myself confused now. It left from San Diego, California and went to Hawaii. That was a fabulous cruise. One of my favorites that I have ever done was the Hawaiian cruise. I have loved them all. There has been one uh, one of the Caribbean ones that just wasn't my favorite. And I think for that one, I was in an inside cabin and there's nothing wrong with inside cabins. I've done an inside cabin again. And the second one was between the Hawaiian and the <clears throat> Mediterranean. I was in an inside cabin in the Mediterranean and I loved it. So there's pros and cons to inside as opposed to window, as opposed to balcony. Um, you know, there's money involved and then what you can see. So there's a lot of stuff into it, uh, you know, with that issue. But think about where you want to go, potentially where you want to leave from because you may go, it's plane tickets are extremely expensive and you're going, um, I would like to maybe do the Mexican Riviera, but I live on the East Coast, so therefore you're going to have to fly to California to leave from the Mexican Riviera for the most part. 
And so think about that um, and how much you want to budget for a plane ticket. Um, so I love the Caribbean. I would definitely recommend doing that one. I would go back in a minute to the Caribbean. Um, I do have that back on my plans for some time in the future. So once you've kind of picked your destination out, um, you may just say, I want to go to the Caribbean, but I'm not that particular. Um, or you may say, I really want to go to St. Thomas. Just, I mean, they've got great shopping there. It's a, if you're from the United States, it's a U.S. territory. Um, so they're going to speak English there. I think pretty much everybody in the Caribbean speaks English. Uh, I have never had an issue whatsoever with the, uh, with them speaking English. Um, but let's just say you've got St. Thomas in mind. Well, you're going to start looking for cruises that go to St. Thomas. And then you're going to look around and say, well, it goes here as well. Is that island something I want to see or not? So you're going to start looking around for different cruise lines at this point in time. See, there's a multiple options. There's Carnival is probably the number one largest in total. There's Royal Caribbean. There's Norwegian. There's Holland American. There's Celebrity. There's Disney. Um, I probably missed a dozen or more, but there's a lot of different options of what you can do. I have cruised on, did I say this earlier, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, Holland American, Norwegian. I think I helped do that earlier. Like I said, I should have wrote this stuff down. So once you've make, made up your mind where you're going, I would start looking uh, for cruises within the destinations and uh, location of where you want to leave from next. And then to start comparing prices. Um, I don't really think there's that much of a pro or con over any of the particular ships. I will tell you I have preferred cruising on the newer ships than some of the older ones. I That was one of the issues I think I had with maybe my second cruise or maybe it was the third one. It was an older ship at the time. And so when you take your first cruise, I went on a, uh, a ship that was a year old on my first cruise and it was a fab fabulous ship. And then with like the next one, it was an older ship. So I was kind of comparing the first one to the second one and it just didn't quite meet up to what I was ex expecting. So I don't, I think once you have that first one, under your belt, you compare all the others to that first one. So that is something that does happen. But as far as the newer ships and the older ships, they most of the cruise lines do have a certain class of ships, and then they will build so many ships that look exactly like that, and they just look at lot look exactly alike. The floor plans, everything's alike except for the decorations. They will do different decorations. So let's say you've you've got your destination, you know how many days you want. Next, you're just going to compare prices. And I recommend doing that all across the ones. Carnival is probably going to be around your cheaper one, whereas Disney Holland American is going to be a little bit more expensive. Disney, I think, is like the top of the line with prices. I've never cruised on a Disney ship. I would love it, but I've always just kind of like told myself, no, I'm just not willing to fork over that amount of money to cruise on Disney. But I have never heard a complaint from anybody that's ever taken a Disney cruise. They've ne they said it was fabulous. So, um, so let's say you've got your ship picked out. Then you're going to decide, do you want an inside cabin? A window that some of the windows are like just portholes. You'll just get the round porthole and some are like squares or rectangulars, more like a square. Then you've got your balconies, then you've got your suites, just depending on what is in your budget and what you want. I have been on the, the only people below me, I was so low on the ship, the only people below me were the deck crew. <laughs> I'm not the deck crew, the entire crew. So, um, <clears throat> so the crew's um, berthing and cabins will be on like deck zero and then um, I was on deck one. I've done that a few times. It's not that big of a deal. Um, if you want a window on deck one, that's going to be your cheapest. And if you want an inside cabin on the lowest deck, that's also going to be your cheapest. And then as you increase, the price will increase. So an, a window on deck one is going to be cheaper than a window on uh, one of the higher decks. Then as you go up, you start to get balcony rooms. And so the balconies also increase in price depending on which deck you're on. So just keep that in mind. Every single deck, the price will change. And then it's also going to change depending on if you got an inside um, window or um, balcony. So just 
there's a lot of stuff to figure into this. So you might just decide that the inside is going to be worth it for you because you're on more of a budget and you want to spend your money somewhere else. Um, I've done windows and uh, inside so far. This cruise that I am planning, I did decide to splurge for a balcony. This will be the first balcony room that I've ever had. And kind of what pushed me over the edge for this one was that it was a 13 day cruise and there are four sea days days at sea where it's not pulling into any port whatsoever and i just started thinking i really wanted that balcony so i decided to splurge for it um while i'm thinking about it i did not bring out the price of this particular cruise that i booked but i will link link the price below right now the price will include gratuity that i automatically went ahead and paid for up front and travel insurance and the balcony room so um, I will link it below it is not cheap I'm gonna tell you right that this is not a budget cruise whatsoever um, one other cost um, that you're gonna come into is the length of cruise is also going to adjust that cost as well so the prices just fluctuate all the time I have cruised before and with Carnival, and this next one is with Carnival, so that I did get a break on the price because of I'm a, I'm a, a past cruiser with them. I did I kind of uh, figured out the prices, before, you know, I put, you get like an ID number that you just keep over and over again. I did it with and without the ID number and it was several hundred dollars difference in the price because of the fact that I have cruised with them before. So that is another thing that's going to adjust the price, but the prices can adjust all over the place you also have to pay port fees and taxes to each place you port into and there's nothing that can be done about that even if you don't get off the ship you're still gonna have to pay for those the only time you can get refunded on is if for some reason that particular ship cannot go to that port then they will refund you the money on that that has happened to me one time so just be aware of that so that is your basic overall cost the initial not overall but the initial cost of booking a cruise you're going to initially pay up front for your room i would go ahead and pay for the gratuity that is optional you can pay it later but I just wanted to go ahead and just get it out of the way and then paying for the travel insurance. There are pros and cons to travel insurance. If you're like, I am not canceling this trip no matter what, don't get the travel insurance. In the past, I have not gotten it for most of my trips. I think I've only gotten travel insurance on one other trip. I uh, didn't need to use it, but it is there. It was like a hundred and something dollars. So I was like, you know what? It's worth paying so I don't lose any money if something were to happen. So um, once you get on the ship, um, you're paying in that initial price, you're paying for almost all of the food you can eat anytime you want to eat it. There are some places where you can spend more money on food on the ship, but the dining room food that's covered in the cost, the buffet is covered in the cost. Um, let, let's see. Um, yeah, basically, the I'm going to say the buffet and the dining rooms. All of that is covered in your initial cost that you're paying for your room and board on that. Now, they do have specialty restaurants. Some of those specialty restaurants, you do have to pay an extra fee for. Just going to throw that out there. I have only done that one time. To me, it wasn't worth it at all, and I don't ever plan on going to a specialty restaurant again on a cruise ship. Some people love those, and they will do those each and every time. I've done it once. It was enough. I'm not going to do it again. Um, then they also have, like, it's not necessarily a Starbucks, but basically a coffee bar where you will pay extra for that coffee. Um, your, like your juice, your tea, um, water, and coffee, that is all in your price. But if you want the specialty, like it's not a Starbucks, but I'm going to call it a Starbucks, um, you got to pay extra for that. They also have a, like a little pastry um, bar as well, and you have to pay for that. It's in addition, so um, that's extra. If you do want to utilize the actual bar bar um, with alcoholic drinks, I don't drink, um, but that is all extra. Um, some people will rack up a lot of um, money in the bar because you're not paying them with cash. They just swipe your room key and then you find out later how much you've spent. So um, 
but if you want any type of sodas or soft drinks like that you also purchase those from the bar where the alcohol is and those are extra on a carnival cruise i called it the coke card and i don't think it's just um uh, specifically on carnival but that's where i purchased it you pay an x number amount of dollars it depends on the length of the cruise and um they will you will get a card it's not on your room key it's a different card and you just show it to the bartender and you tell them i want a coke or i want a dr pepper or whatever they've got that's in the soft drink world and they will they're not going to give you a bottle or a, a can they're just going to fill up a glass but it is unlimited you can get as much as you want so you can stand there and drink it sit there and drink it and then hand in and say i want another one so that can go on and on um if you're going to drink a lot of sodas i definitely recommend getting that i still call it the coke card i don't think it's called the coke card i would definitely recommend doing that you can also bring sodas on with you if you choose to do so just pack them in your suitcase and then they will just take them on i have done that before yes i have because it's a whole lot cheaper they charge a lot for sodas on the ship so um that's another expense if you buy anything in the gift shop there's you know like some crackers or gum candy bars that's in the gift shop so you're going to pay more for that you can bring your snacks on with you if you would choose to do do so i have done that many many times just because i like having certain snacks and um I just bring them on with me myself. It's a bit ridiculous, but it saves me money in the long run. So those are pretty much the hidden cost. The entertainment um, is absolutely free. Like if you go to any of their shows, any of their um, cooking demonstrations, ice carving demonstrations. I've been to, on the Hawaiian cruise, I've been to lectures. Those were absolutely free. Um, another cost uh, that's out there, I didn't think about this ahead of time because I don't gamble, but the casino, you are going to spend money in the casino. So if you choose to go that route um, just not some I just don't gamble so I don't spend any money but I do remember the only place to get cash on the ship because I needed to get some cash for the laundry <laughs> is in the casino um, so most of the ships will have a laundry if you need it so that does you will need money for that at least the last time that I utilized it used quarters I believe so um, um, I'm trying to think any other hidden cost oh the next biggest one how could I forget this one excursions that is where the majority of my money gets spent is in excursions so I can't believe I didn't start out with that <laughs> when I was talking about uh, uh, once you pay for the cruise so um, the excursions can run you probably as low as 20 something bucks to over 200 maybe even $300 depending on where it is located the cruise is and what you're going to be doing if you just want to take a like a city tour where that you just get on a bus and it just drives you around it's not going to be very expensive at all it may be around 20 bucks especially if it's a cruise where you can just step off of the ship and you are in port it's going to be a lot cheaper if you want to do a city cruise if you want to do something like swimming with the dolphins or some sort of like major excursion it's going to be much more expensive and so depending on how many excursions that you want to book um you know the price will change and you do have the opportunity depending on where it is to book m at least two excursions in one port i've done that before and do one in the morning one in the afternoon now the cruise that i'm going to next year in at least two of the ports i don't know about the rest i know about three of the ports um the other places I've never been to before, so I don't know what will happen with those, but in Rome and Florence, the ships cannot pull into Rome and Florence. It's just not possible. So they will port further away out, and then you get on a bus. You, do, you could take the train if you wished, um, but if you book an excursion, it's about an hour and a half drive to Rome. I would say maybe an hour or so drive into Florence those excursions are going to cost more because of that length of trip that you have to take. My camera was about to cut me off, so I had to restart it. Um, so the excursions can run you a lot of money. You do have the opportunity to book the excursions prior to going on your cruise, or you can book them while you're on the cruise. They will usually do an excursion talk and tell you all about them, and that way you can kind of make a decision what you want. Some of them sell out really quickly and I have been looking at the excursions and I will list the price of the ones that I am planning on taking. There's eight excursions that I, I think this is eight stops. And so 
I will link the price of them total. These are the ones that I have in mind right now. I can obviously, obviously change my mind when I'm on the ship, but I do plan on going ahead and booking all of those prior to um, going on actually boarding the ship. So I just want to go ahead and get that out of the way. And um, I don't know if I told you, this particular cruise, I've alluded to the fact it's European, it leaves from Barcelona, then it goes to, I may be messing up the order that it goes to in, but it basically it's going to go in kind of a circle. It's going to go to Florence, it's going to go to Rome, Naples. Um, the, the port in Naples, the ship will pull into port in Naples, so you can get out and walk around Naples if you choose to do so. Then it's going to go to um, uh, Croatia, Dubrovnik. I may be just mispronouncing that like crazy. It's going to go there. It's going to go to Corfu, Greece. It's going to go to um, Sicily, which is still part of Italy. It's going to go to Malta. I'm very excited about Malta. It's going to also go to Sardinia. So let me see. We've got, uh, make sure I got everybody. It's Rome. Florence, maybe not in that order, Naples, uh, Croatia, uh, Sicily, Malta, Sardinia. I still feel like I'm leaving something out because I remember I think there was eight excursions. Um, I will list um, somewhere in here, um, maybe in the description box everywhere it's going. Uh, I still feel like I'm leaving something out and then it ends up back in Barcelona. So I'm just thrilled about this trip, but there's cost everywhere to it. Then you've got your plane ticket to get to wherever you're going. So that's another call. So there's a lot of things to weigh out. If you decide to take a cruise as opposed to maybe just say flying into Rome and then just kind of going out from there, you could do that if you're interested. But I love cruising. The greatest thing I think about it is I get to see so many different places and I don't have to pack up my luggage every night. It just stays in my room. That is awesome about it. The downsides to it are you don't get to spend as much time in each place as you would if you were deciding I'm going to take a, a trip to Italy and I'm going to stay two nights in each city. You know, maybe do Rome, Florence, and Venice and stay two nights in each place. Um, you do get to see a lot more when you do that. Unfortunately with a cruise you don't get to do it. So that is the negative but it's it's also great because it's easy. You can easily see so many other places than just say going and flying and say I'm going to stay in Rome for five days. I would be able to see more of Rome, but it's one of those things you just kind of have to weigh out. Less time in each place, but you can see more places, and you don't have to pack up your luggage, which is great because I have taken land trips where we're packing up our luggage every other night and it is wasn't fun. <laughs> I would say not fun. You're basically just living out of a suitcase the entire time. So um, I'm, if there's anything else, I will talk more about the trip later on um, and I'm going to talk more and do other videos about the different excursions that I have, that I am choosing. I'm going to have separate videos for each one of those because this one is getting super long right now, but I wanted to give you an overview about cruising in general and then about a little bit of specifics about this particular one that I am taking. Um, this is a, before I wrap this up, and I apologize if I say um a lot, I try not to do that. I wanted to say it right there again. I um, didn't talk too much about the particular ship. It is a brand new ship with Carnival. To my knowledge, or to my understanding, the ship is currently being built right now, and I'm going to be taking one of the first cruises on that ship, which makes me nervous and excited the entire time because I'm like, I kind of want it to get some cruises under its belt, so to speak, before I go on it. That way, if there's any issue, it gets us out of the way. But I'm also excited that I'm one of the first people that will be cruising on this ship. Thrilled about that. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video now. If you got any questions, ask them below. And I'm going to be doing a whole lot more videos in this series. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye, guys.